Grace and mercy and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, my good brothers and sisters in the faith. I hope you're not expecting me to make plain and simple the doctrine of the Trinity. For the doctrine of the Trinity is a mystery that we limited human beings will never be able to quite wrap our minds around. The Bible teaches that there is only one God. The Bible teaches that the Father is God. The Bible teaches that the Son is God. And it teaches that the Holy Spirit is God. We believe that there are these three persons, each distinct from one another. There are not uh, three gods, but one. But how can this be? I don't know. Therefore, the sermon today will not be a perfect rational explanation of the Holy Trinity. It will rather be based on the gospel lesson I read a few moments ago. Jesus says to his disciples, go. It's not surprising because God the Father one day said to his eternal son, go. Leave this heavenly glory. Go and enter into a human flesh and blood infant who will be named Jesus. God said, go. Become a helpless baby formed in the womb of a virgin, born in a manger, grew just like you and I, in stature and in wisdom and in understanding and in praise of his fellow men. Jesus came. He let himself be baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist, even though he, Jesus, had no sins to confess and therefore no sins to be forgiven. Nevertheless, he submitted to John's baptism, Jesus said, to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus went, being led by the Holy Spirit, out into the desert and faced uh, the Satan who set temptations before him and he knocked Satan down, one, two, three reciting the word of God against him, staying strong although he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. He walked around Jerusalem and Galilee preaching the good news of the kingdom of God which he said is near because he, the king, was near. And yet, in his final entry into Jerusalem, he did not enter with a crown on his head. He entered lowly and humble upon the back of an ass. He was arrested, tried, convicted, and crucified. What a way for the Lord of glory to be treated here on earth, to be crucified, not for even his own sins, but for the sins of the world, for your sins and my sins. But he went because his father had said go. And so Jesus said to his disciples, and so also to you and I, go. We gather here once 
maybe twice a week throughout the year. We hear the word read and proclaimed. We worship and praise the Lord our God who sent our Savior Jesus Christ for us. But from here at the end, after Bible class, although there is no Bible class this Sunday, but after gathering for some goodies and coffee or refreshments, we go. We go from this place because Jesus said, go. And he told us what we are to do when we go. We are to go and make disciples. Just as Peter and James and John and Matthew and Judas and Judas Iscariot and the others were disciples of Jesus, just as we are disciples of Jesus, we are to go and make other disciples. What is a disciple? A disciple is one who sits at the feet of a teacher, who learns from him the wisdom that the teacher imparts who watches the teacher as he lives his life, listens to his words, watches the things that he does, notices the sort of people that he gathers around him, the good deeds that he does for those who are in need. And then a disciple, having sat at the feet of the teacher, having watched and learned, then goes and does likewise. And so we have been catechized. I notice both of my most recent catechesis class are here. And that's a pleasure to see. But we've all been through that. We have sat at the feet of Jesus, who was there not visibly among us, but there nonetheless, to be taught, to be taught what Jesus said and did, to learn the sorts of people he went to, the people in need, the hungry, the poor, the lame, the blind, the mute, the sick, and the dead. And he helped them all. So we have learned from Jesus. We have heard of his deeds. And as his disciples, we then go from this place and do the same. Not so that the world can look upon us and say, oh, what a fine Christian that person is. But rather to look at the deeds that we do and say, what a great God this person has learned from, worships and prays. I want to know about his God or her God. We let our light shine in this world so that others may see our good deeds and glorify God, who is in, our Father, who is in heaven. And so having learned the words of Jesus and the teachings of Jesus, we go from this place and we tell others what we have learned. That God is a God of mercy, slow to anger, and abundant and forgiving love, who forgives sins of all who come to him and call upon him and confess their sins. He turns them not away, but receives them into himself and forgives them their sins and gives them their Holy Spirit, his Holy Spirit, and leads them and guides them in the way that Jesus went, who has gone before us. 
And so we go. The disciples of Jesus. So that we may make more disciples. So that we may tell everyone the wondrous glory of Jesus. The Son of God and the Son of Man who lived a perfect life, suffered and died for the sins of the world, so that all who believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. For Jesus did not come into this world to condemn the world, but that the world through him may live. That's the message that we have learned the forgiveness of sins to all who trust in Jesus as their Savior. Not just for this life, but for the life to come. For this life on this earth is fleeting. Here today and gone tomorrow. Like the grass or the flowers. Beautiful though they be, eventually they wither, they die. And so we. There is a gravestone waiting for us with our names on it, one and all. But the grave that gapes before us is not the final resting place, no. For all who trust in Christ, it is a doorway. Jesus said to us, I am the door. Any who enter through me shall have life. That grave is the doorway to eternal life for all who believe, for all who stay faithful to the very end. And so we who have come, Jesus says, go. Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them as we have been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them all those things that Jesus has taught us. And we do this not alone. For we are all brothers and sisters. We are here each with their own talents, knowledge, and abilities to help and share with others, to build one another up in the faith so that we do not face this task alone. But we face it not just with brothers and sisters in the faith of Jesus Christ, but we face it and do it with the presence of Jesus himself. For Jesus said at the end of this passage here, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. There will come a day when Jesus shall return. The last day, the day of judgment. And on that day, the great resurrection, those bodies which have been laid to rest in the ground will rise again. We will meet Jesus in the sky and we will be with him, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit forever and ever. Brothers and sisters, what a great and wondrous day and eternity that shall be. And so, brothers and sisters, I say to you what Jesus said, go. Make disciples of all around you, bringing them to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all things which Jesus has told us and taught us. For so that's the message of the gospel lesson this Trinity Sunday. We who have come here are to go. And with that I say amen. Now may the peace of God which passes understanding 
Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.